Hello everybody. Now we will see a presentation about Cylindon distributed computing with Python. So thank you. My name is Fridolin Pokorny and as said this presentation will be about distributed computing with Python. And let's have a look at the agenda. So first I will talk about Celery. Celery is quite a popular project. If you don't know it, I will discuss some basics. Then I will show some, some pitfalls you can find with uh, using Celery and basically why Selenon was developed. I will show you the key idea behind Selenon and also some experiences with Selenon I've got. So Celery, Celery is quite popular project. Uh, it's, uh, you can find it on celeryproject.org. Uh, it was written by Ask Soem, and he's the current maintainer as well. Celery is a distributed task queue, so you can uh, run your task written in Python distributively, and it's quite widely used. For example, it's used in Django uh, as Django Celery for background tasks. So how does Celery work? As in any distributed system, we have some kind of message that describes what should be compute and the arguments. We queue this message into, into a message broker and, oops, sorry. We queue it in message broker and there are connected some workers to, to this message broker. Every worker uh, listens on some particular queue and once uh, there's available uh, worker and uh, there's message queued, some worker picks that message and starts to execute. As we are in distributed system, there can be uh, multiple messages queued, so when there's available uh, worker, it starts to processing it. There's also result backend. This result backend is used for storing results of tasks and also for, for storing uh, state of tasks. So once uh, a, a message is processed, there's written a result to result backend and the worker is available again. The same applies for the worker one. So this is the key idea behind Celery. Now let's discuss some uh, flows. In the real world, you have some tasks that have time or data dependencies between them. So let's model something like that. We have six tasks and there are uh, dependencies between these tasks. And uh, these dependencies are uh, as shown in the picture. So. With Celery, there are some Celery primitives that allows you to group tasks into, into some primitives like group where you can execute tasks in parallel or chain where you are executing one task after another. So uh, in our uh, flow, we have these dependencies. Let's say that uh, these tasks uh, have various execution time. That means uh, there needs to be, the, needs to be, for example, one minute uh, to process that task. If we use salary primitives, we group it into a court and we can run task one to task four in parallel and uh, task five and task six in parallel. As you can see, the first court takes 30 minutes to process and the second, uh, it takes 10 minutes. Uh, the result of task five and task six is uh, available after 40 minutes. And if we can do better, we can, uh, by removing these cords, we can uh, find a result after 31 minutes in case of task six, and in case of task five, we can find it after 40 minutes. So we are no longer blocked by uh, tasks that take a lot of time. Also, when you use Celery, there are some downsides, like you are hard coding your task logic and dependencies on this task into your source code. So adding new task, it's complex. You can, you, uh, a lot of times, you, you just have to reorganize your, your task and dependencies between them. And uh, what about task failures? If a task fails, we want to recover somehow from this failure. We also want to reuse uh, uh, these tasks and we don't want to be uh, blocked by using one storage at, at a time. Uh, 
So that's how Selenon was uh, introduced. Selenon means salary in Greek. Uh, Greek is quite popular with naming distributed systems such as Kubernetes, so I picked Selenon. And what Selenon offers you, it offers you to separate flow logic from your uh, task logic. That means you, you implement a task and then you provide a configuration, a simple YAML file, which states how this task should be grouped. It also allows uh, to model dependencies between these tasks. It also allows you to use different storages and also to do something like recovering from, from failures. So let's take a look. Here's an example of Selenon task. You just Im import Selenon task, you derive from it, and you, you provide a method that uh, is called run, and that's uh, the input of the task. Then you return your result. That's all. Then you provide the YAML configuration file. Let's say we have three tasks. And in this YAML configuration file, we state, hey, we have these tasks. So you provide a list of tasks. You provide an import where these tasks should be, uh, where the implementation of tasks sits. You provide a name of the task. And you also provide optionally queue where this message should be queued. Then you provide flow definitions, so you name your flow, and uh, you give edges. So basically, a flow is described by edges. Uh, as in uh, example, there's started task one. We don't have source, so the so the task one is run initially, and then we after the task one is done, we run task two and task three. You might be wondering what are these octagons on on the picture. These octagons are conditions. So uh, what, what Selenon allows you, it allows you to state conditions and, and execute task conditionally. So for example, let's say we want to run task two and task three after task one, and we give condition like, hey, I want to run if field is equal, that means the result of task one, uh, has key proceed and this key is is uh, has value yes or if uh, there's some environment variable and this environment variable is uh, named testing so by, by providing this condition we have conditional execution as you can see You might be wondering, OK, we provided a condition, and we are inspecting the result of task, but we didn't uh, provide a way how to, how to say, hey, I want to, I want to store some result into a storage or database. Selenon offers you th this as way. Uh, you, you know, what do you need to do? You just need to uh, provide a definition of database adapters. So for example, if you want to use Redis, you just provide, hey, uh, how, how, this, how to connect to a database, how to retrieve a result, or how to store a result from, from database. Then, then you, you provide this definition into your YAML configuration file, where you state uh, where the implementation of database adapter sits and what is the name. Optionally, you provide a configuration, and then you assign uh, these storages or databases to your tasks. And as, as visualized, these, uh, these results are stored in Postgres or Redis in this uh, example. Now, uh, we want to have some granted control in our flow. So we want to have something that will give us uh, a way how to recover from failures, and this can be done using fallback task or fallback flows. The configuration is pretty straightforward, so in your flow definition you provide uh, failures, and you state, hey, if nodes task 2 and task 3 at the same time fail, I want to run fallback 1. Another failure could be that only task 2 failed, and in that case, we want to run fallback two. If we visualize it, we can see that if task two and task three failed, we run fallback one. In case of task two failure, we run fallback two. Now, you want to, in many cases, you want to reuse uh, this. So you want to run some flow from another flow. 
Selenon offers you subflows, and it's pretty straightforward. As a flow is another node in a, in your uh, dependency graph, you can directly uh, state your flow in your YAML configuration file, like this. So after, in this particular scenario, after the init task is done, we can run flow one. After that, we run flow two. And now you might be wondering how does Selenon work? The key idea behind Selenon is uh, a special task that is called dispatcher task. And this task basically is scheduled on some nodes and it periodically checks the state of the flow. So we have a dispatcher for, that is uh, dedicated for each flow and uh, it checks the state of the flow, it checks which task failed, which task succeeded, and it schedules a new task if needed. You just provide YAML configuration file, and this YAML configuration file is automatically parsed. There are also some additional checks that your, your YAML configuration file is correct. There's also a way how to visualize flows, so you can just provide YAML, your YAML configuration file, and Selenon will give you these graphs as shown on pictures. There are also other uh, features like caches. If you don't want to receive a result of a task every time, you can use uh, Selenon caches. Also, there, are, there is a way how to use cache for, for retrieving the status of task. You, you can also do task or flow throttling. Uh, you can say, for example, hey, I want to run these tasks uh, no, no more than two times per minute. Uh, it uh, Selino allows you to do that. You can do also task prioritization, like, hey, I, I put a lot of workers that listen on some queue, and uh, this way you can prioritize tasks. Uh, there's also a way how to optimize dispatcher scheduling, so you can schedule dispatcher, for example, once after uh, two seconds, or you can do it uh, after five minutes. There are, uh, there's also a trace, trace point mechanism where dispatcher will tell you what's going on in the system. So you can, for example, uh, inspect what's, uh, what's going on in the system. And you can do it, you can do it by inspecting JSONs that provide uh, some unique keys, such as dispatcher ID or, or task that were run. And you can listen on some particular events, such as, uh, such as uh, scheduling new flow, <laughs> scheduling new task, or, or retrieving results or failures. So to summarize it, Selenon is built on top of Celery. It uses Celery uh, to, to communicate with broker. It, uh, it provides you a way how to easily define your tasks and uh, flows uh, just by providing YAML configuration file. It allows you to separate task logic, so you have Python code, and then uh, you have uh, logic of storing tasks. And it allows you to conditionally execute some task, group task into flows, and it offers you advanced flow handling, so you can uh, recover from flow failures, and you can do system diagnosis by, by trace points. This is an example. Uh, Selenon is currently used in, at Red Hat, and here is uh, an example of flows that we have. Uh, as you can see, they can be complex, and they can be uh, nested one inside another, so things may be quite quite uh, hard to understand at the first point. So uh, that's it from me. You can find Selenon on GitHub. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask.
So the question was how to do throttling, like we want to execute a lot of tasks in parallel, but we want to have throttling mechanism available. So uh, there's a trick to do that. You can uh, schedule dispatcher on, uh, on one particular node, and this node will take care of how many nodes are, are being executed. So that's it. Another? Uh, so I don't know if I. Re so the question was regarding uh, fallbacks. So the question was if there basically if there are some dependencies, dependence between task two and task three failure and when in the fallback is run. So uh, in this particular scenario, uh, Selenon will take care of it. It will wait for all tasks to finish, and after they finish, they will look, hey, I have some, some failure, and if I can recover from it. So if task two fails, and task three is still uh, running, uh, we wait for task three to finish. Any other question? I don't know if I understood it correctly. Can you repeat it like louder or? Okay, so the question was if we can add a task dynamically, like you have deployed your, your system and we want to add task dynamically. Uh, no, you cannot do this. It's not possible. Yeah? Yeah, go on. So the question was about uh, failures, and I didn't hear. How would you register every time a task is uh, failed or exceeds? I want to monitor it when it's going for a So the question was, uh, how do we monitor like if a uh, task fails or so? Uh, this is reused from, from Celery. Uh, so when a task fails, it, it basically states the the failure state in a, in a result backend, and then you have a mechanism how to ask what was the state, and based on this state we proceed with with fallback. Uh, yeah, we we query it. Any other question? Uh, the question was. Uh, I don't use it in Django. It's like a uh, distributed system where we uh, where we run OpenShift, and there are nodes, and uh, these nodes are communicating with Selenon. You don't have anything to you don't have anything yet to integrate it into a Django. Uh, no, there, there's no Django integration. Any other question? So okay, thank you.